When the Second World War ended in 1945, Europe was in ruins for the second time in less than three decades. There was a consensus something had to be done. A leading champion of European unity was the man who led Britain through the war. We hope to see a Europe where men of every country will think as much of being a European as of belonging to their native land. But it was six other nations, most importantly France and Germany, that established the European Coal and Steel Community in 1951. By design, it intertwined economies of nations that had been at war to ensure peace would make more economic sense than conflict. Further integration followed with a new name, the European Economic Community. Internal customs duties were removed and policies on agriculture, energy and justice were coordinated. In the 70s, the UK somewhat reluctantly joined as part of the first expansion and European Parliament elections were held for the first time. In the 90s, the bloc was trading in many ways as if it were a single nation and the concept of European citizenship was formed. Europeans could freely travel, do business and live anywhere within the community. At the turn of the century, 11 of the 15 members locked their currencies together to form the Euro. The UK opted out. 2004 saw the eastward expansion. Ten new members joined, most of them former Soviet bloc countries. It was a high point in pro-EU sentiment across the continent. In the years that followed, the EU had to roll back proposed changes after voters in some countries rejected them. In 2008, the global financial crisis nearly brought the single currency to its knees. The affected member states were hamstrung, unable to devalue their currency to kickstart their economies. Bailouts and austerity programs were hugely controversial, sowing doubts about the merits of the single currency and the EU as a whole. The EU is now a 28-member club. As the UK tries to leave, its economy remains one of the top three within the EU, alongside the two main founding members, Germany and France. Britain is a net contributor, funding and supporting key institutions and is seen as an important link to the English-speaking world. These days, Winston Churchill is the epitome of British power, a hero to those who want to see the UK leave. One wonders what the champion of a united Europe would make of this never-ending mess. Redmond Shannon, Global News, London.